What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to show you guys how to do a water break in for a brush motor for a red cat vehicle. Pretty much pretty much any vehicle, but you know, actually, you know, since I'm dealing with red cat, that's what I'm going to show you today. So I got my son's volcano here who he uh burned it. He burned up the motor on this thing, taking it through some high grass. They were playing around and you know, we run lipo batteries on it. And when you tend to do that, it, it really gives the full voltage and you know, made the max potential of that motor. And then you start getting it into some thicker grass and things like that, and you can wind up burning it up if you're not careful. So you do got to be careful with that. But basically, uh, we're going to clean this motor up, and I'm going to lubricate it prior to putting it in, just to extend the life of it, and actually it does, uh, does give a little bit of top speed difference. You don't want to do this if you already have your motor in your truck and you've ran it. But if you ever go through a motor and you want to put another motor in, or if you're buying any brushed vehicle and you want to take the time to pull the motor out and do this it's definitely going to give you a little bit of horsepower increase but it's also going to give you a little more longevity on your motor it's basically just kind of flushes out all the the junk and the grit that's inside this motor and as long as you lubricate it properly again afterwards it's perfectly fine i mean this thing the only reason this thing's been on here for probably about six months at least and the only reason, like I said, it blew up was basically they were running it in the grass. It was pretty much up here rubbing on the chassis. It was just a little thick for this thing being brushed. Just in a place it didn't really belong, I would say. So either way, let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up and we'll get it going. Now I'm not worried about taking this one out yet. I'm just going to plug this motor up for the time being. All right, so we got you got your power to your ESC, and we got the motor hooked up. Now, obviously, like I said, normally, ooh, I didn't even think about that. Hmm. I'll have to prop this up a little bit just so it can set down in there. All right, we'll fire this thing up first and just make sure motor is functional right now. Pretty sure it was a motor that was bad on this thing. Always helps to test it I guess. Hmm. Nothing. Oh, there we go. All right, so the trick, obviously, we're going to have to make this thing run consistent, first of all. But, I mean, you can just go ahead and drop it on in. That trick and all. And you want to... I'm going to find a way to hold this, probably use a piece of tape or something, and keep this throttle going the whole time. We basically... First of all, I'm sorry, I... I got a key element here all the only thing in this water right now is a little bit of dawn and some water so we're going to the first process is going to be basically just to clean it so you're gonna see my nice clean water basically it's gonna wind up turning a little bit darker now we're going yeah a little bit too much water you gotta be careful how much water you put in you also gotta be careful how much throttle I thought I had a big enough jar but apparently not What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit of this water out of here just because I want to be able to get this thing going pretty fast. I'm not trying to have this whole thing covered everywhere, but... Now basically, you're going to do this for, I mean, obviously, you use a larger jar. I mean, just want to, last time I 
grab the jar. The first one I did, I, it wasn't, um, it was too deep for the motor to sit down properly. So that's a catch-22. You get too deep of a jar and the motor doesn't sit all the way down. And basically, if you don't get too deep of a jar, you put too much water and soap in, this is what you get. But, I mean, just prepare yourself. I mean, it's a messy process, but we're going to do this approximately... I mean, half the battery, maybe, about 10 minutes. Now you notice that water is uh, pretty warm. I mean, it's normal, obviously, you put the motor through, it's got heat. If you feel the jar, it's actually freaking hot. Alright. Now you turn off the truck. Now, I gotta rinse this thing, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this sit here. And once the bubbles start to dissolve, you'll see what's left. Alright, so I probably put just a tad too much soap in there because it's really not getting unsoapy but I mean you can get the gist of what we're getting at here and there's a light right there between that and it's pretty cruddy so now the next process we're going to do is we're going to go get some clean water and try to get all the soap and all out of it by doing it that way so let me go get some clean water and I'll get rid of this garbage here I really was hoping this would uh, pan up and be about 50-50, but didn't seem to do that like last time. Like I said, I think I used a little too much soap, but either way, can't hurt it. It just, uh, for purposes of what I wanted to show you, is that, but on a larger scale. So, all right, I'll be right back. All right. So we got our clean water again. Drop my motor back in. Same process, just gonna let it run a little bit. All right, now next up we gotta do pretty much is just, we're gonna air dry this. We're gonna try to blow some of this water out here. You don't want it to rust. You don't want to sit in there too long. You really want to get that water out. Also, I don't have the right lubricant. I was just looking while this was doing this. Um, I'm gonna use WD-40. If you use WD-40, I recommend every, I don't know, three or four runs, Taking some more WD-40 and just shooting some inside of here. Pick the truck up, spin it, and throw some in there. And that just keeps it lubricated for long life. Because what we just did, basically, we cleaned off a lot of the oils that they put on these things that makes them lubricated and stays lubricated. While we were getting rid of all the junk and stuff that was on the magnetic, uh, you know, the whole just the dirt and grime. Basically, junk you don't want. But we also did clean off some stuff you did want. So that's why we got to re-lubricate this. And the way I'm going to do it with WD-40, every two or three runs, I just keep it lubricated. Um, 
obviously there's some grease and things you can get motor grease and oils that you can put in there be a little bit better but So that's not going to get it all out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this a little bit and let it air dry. And I can, I'm holding it, and I can feel the water coming out of the, the porch there, just like a, almost like a mist coming out on my hand. Again, for long term, I recommend a different method as far as lubrication, but I'm going to basically use WD-40, which again is a short term solution. You know, the, the dirt and things that build up on them after every runs. If you take it out in a real dusty area, you might want to relubricate it uh, right after that run. It's just a matter of reshooting a little bit of WD 40 on the inside, holding the truck up a little bit, let it spin just to get the, the oil distributed a little bit around inside the can. Other than that, it's good. And I'm, I'm telling you, six months I've had that on that truck, and both my sons drove this truck, and it, every time I go out running, so it's got some longevity on it. Alright, I'm gonna do the gonna do the greasing up now. Lost my damn nozzle to my WD forty, so so I'm just gonna make a mess and spray it in there. I mean, that should be good. Like I said, I'm going to do it every few runs or so. I can, you can, you'll hear a different sound from when you're running it to get the water out of it. And after you lubricate it, it definitely sounds a lot smoother. And that's kind of what you want. So I'm, I think we're good right now. But that was pretty much the process. And like I said, even after you saw the dirt, I mean, you got this much more out of it. You lubricate it properly. Um... Again, I forget the name of the grease that you want to put in there. But you can find, you know, people talking about it on tracks, this and other vehicles and all. It's the same thing. But uh, the WD-40 method is uh, more easier access by a lot of people and, and less hassle. And again, as long as you just remember, just throw some in here, spin it a little bit while it's, you know, pick it up off the ground. Now, obviously, I got the heat sink and all on this with the fan because we run the lipo, so I try to do anything I can to keep the temperatures down but either way it that's the process it's very simple it's well worth it I mean I do recommend it again uh, you know some people will say that it, it shortens the life some people will tell you that it, um, it lengthens the life 
where, again, where I tell you that it might shorten your life is, is if you don't keep it lubricated. So if you don't put the right grease in this to begin with and you go with the WD-40 route, just make sure every three or four runs that you're giving a little bit of spray. And again, not much, just enough to, to get in there and, and lubricate it. Give it a couple of trigger pulls, let it let it cycle around, turn it off, and you'll be good to go for another three or four runs. So, and again, sometimes I'm not I'm not on that. Might be three, four, five, six runs before I get to it. And uh, you know, who knows? Maybe maybe that's one of the reasons why I burned up is that you know I let it go for a little bit too long. But I think more or less the grass and the lipo battery was the cause. But you never know. So. Either way, just keep on it, and it's well worth it. I definitely recommend it. Again, pointless if you've already ran your truck a few times with it. You know, start fresh. Motors are very inexpensive. If you want to pick up a, a $20, $18 motor, whatever it is, and, and throw it in and start over, you, you know, that, that might get you the increase that you're looking for. And then also, obviously, the brushed. Um, if you do run LiPo battery, make sure you change your jumper on the ESC to the LiPo setting as well. And that's just going to make sure that the voltage coming in is is going to handle be handled by the ESC. So you can run this on the lipo, obviously, without crossing over that whole aspect. You just want to make sure, again, not in thick grass, not in anywhere you're going to stress it out for a long period of time, like thick grass, like uh, running it up a big hill, constantly going down and coming right back up. Things like that that are going to just work the motor and make it work a little extra hard. You're going to want to burn it up. But again, if you do burn it up, it's fairly inexpensive and easy to replace. So, that's all I got for today. If you guys have any questions or anything, leave me a comment. I'll be happy to respond. If you guys got any concerns or anything else, also let me know. So, Alright, thank you for watching. Take care.